today I'll be going to, uh, you'll see me skip out because I'll be speaking in a church in the north. Um, so I'll be praying on that one. That it's going to be a fun time this morning. So um, anyways, we're in Luke chapter 19, I'm going to kind of set the tone going from verse 11, just talking about it, and then we'll go in and read um, some of the, the verses. I am in the Amplified, so um, some of the things, you know, get amplified. <laughs> That's a lot more words are added to it. Um, so we just came through a big week, right, with voting and results and emotions about the results. <laughs> so, yeah. so I think that... Um, just to kind of clear the air regarding that, we, we have to acknowledge there's some things that uh, tick us off regarding what's happened, you know, because we want a certain thing to happen a certain way. But God is on the throne, and he is moving us into to things that it's like um, our, our, our brains usually like to do things where it's two plus two is four. There you go. Done. Um, but there's something more to this where... Um, it isn't going to be like, oh, we won, now let's move on. It's like, no, it's going to be a pressure. We're putting a pressure. And then it's whether or not we're going to hold the line on that pressure. So we have to hold the line. Um, and that means there's some really great people who have gotten into offices in different places or whatever. There is a pressure. They need us. They need us to be able to stand for them and uh, alongside of them. And I... I just believe in the hovering, the brooding of the spirit for even those who are unsaved. We have that opportunity. It's like, well, now you're going to be under the hovering and the brooding of the spirit, right? So you're in a, in a spot where the prayer warriors have, or they're praying that we're, we're moving the heavens in that way. And so it's going to stir up stuff. So in some ways, I feel sorry for some of the people. So it's like, well, now you're about to get stirred. And that's going to, you know, I compared it to a sewer. That's going to look kind of messy for you. <laughs> so just saying. Um, so we have to look at it like there's a positive thing there. Because he does, um, he does work with us where he, he sorts out our heart. And, um, you know, so that's where we have to keep the pressure of prayer. Because that gives them every opportunity. If they're, they're opposing God they still, the pressure of that is going to be there, and they have every opportunity then to, to turn to him or harden their heart. So the great divide has already been taking place. It's going to continue on sorting out different things, right? So I just want to show you uh, a side of Jesus's character because you either have religious law um, that kind of draws a line where it's like, this is God, and he's just mean, and you better better not uh, move a certain way, or you're going to be in big trouble, kind of deal. Um, and then there's others that that teach the New Testament. I'm just going New Testament, more like um, you know, God is love, and this fluffy clouds, and lots of roses, and and he would never correct someone, and he he just understands, you know, all of that type of stuff. So those are two spectrums that are ditches, and God is actually in the middle, where um, if you follow, just even going through Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, just, you know, if you read, and you say, God, show me how Jesus is, because Jesus is Lord, right? So how does he lord this thing? How does he rule this thing? Because the way that he rules, we shall rule. He's given us the same authority. He said, here's my authority. You keep doing and greater things than these. You go ahead and do, right? But look and uh, look to him and, and imitate him. So, but when we imitate him, it has to be by the spirit. So if we jump out and try to do something that we saw Jesus do, you know, like he corrected, we're going to read a little bit how he corrected somebody. Well, he did it, so I'm going to get in there. No, but the spirit of God may come on us and we end up in a situation where we're actually correcting something. And it looks, looks a little rough. <laughs> um, it's still God. It's still God. So here he's, he's talking about in Luke 19. Um, well, it's just so good. He just got done uh, visiting with Zacchaeus. And conviction came on him. And um, today salvation has come into this household. Whew, that's really great. So that's, that's um, he's not telling them, you know, you got out of hell. 
and that's it. He's literally saying salvation power is now on your household. So any aspect about, about what he's about to do and hasn't even done yet, he's saying salvation power has come on your household. That's, that's so powerful. Then he goes in and he talks about, um, from verse 11 on, he's talking about um, the stewardship of a good servant and, and the attitude. It's more about the attitude of our servanthood. Um, and then he leads up, it leads up to verse 27. Uh, well, no, verse 28, the triumphal entry. After saying these things, so he got to kind of get the story. He just was with Zacchaeus. Now he's laying out a, a parable and sorting some things out. It's a strong parable that really causes, here's the different levels of heart, the way the heart thinks. And now he's here, triumphal entry. After saying these things, verse 28, Jesus went on ahead of them, going up to Jerusalem. When he approached Bethphage and Bethany on uh, at the mount that is called Olivet, he sent two of the disciples, saying, Go into the villages ahead of you. There, as you enter, you will find a donkey colt tied on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it to me. If anybody else asks you, Why are you untying the colt? You will say, The Lord needs it. So before we go any further, we just already drew the story of like, he's been here for quite some time already just healing people, casting out demons, doing all the stuff, the work of the ministry, um, demonstrating to them, teaching them or whatever. Then he comes into this parable after meeting with Zacchaeus, which was an example also showing them, hey, you love the unlovable. See, he's, he's showing them because he's the, the rabbi and they're to follow and do what he does. And so then he ends up dividing out, um, you know, the parable of money usage, which is also a parable regarding our attitudes. So he's bringing us, if you look at it like step by step, he's bringing us into a deeper uh, look at how the disciples were, or a deeper relationship at this time. If you go back to when they first were following him, it was like, well, I don't know, you want me to throw this uh, net out into the water again? Okay, you know, they were in that stage where he's starting to now move into the spot where he's getting ready to be crucified. He's getting closer to that, so some things are starting to divide out, okay? The reason I'm bringing that up is because we are in an hour where some things are going to divide out. This wave of, of how he uh, reveals himself to us, um, will come like that, where we're doing these these things that we're like, oh yeah, somebody got healed, and and we're sharing the gospel, and it gets it's kind of more of a simple uh, way of Christianity, and then he takes us into deeper things where he wants us to rule, draw boundaries, have boundaries for ourselves, those types of things, and 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 here's an example that we just walk through how how he's going here. So, um, going to the village ahead. There as you enter, you'll find a donkey colt tied. Now, if you look at this, even uh, prophetically, look at it like right now. He is telling people to go find things that have never transported them before. This donkey has never been ridden before, right? So he's revealing supernaturally in this time for them. He's saying to them by word of knowledge, um, you know, an operation of, of how God operates, and he says, go into the village ahead of you. There as you enter, you will find a donkey's colt tied on which no one has ever sat. So the Lord said to me, he said, we are in an hour right now where he's giving direction to those who are in government, leadership, the nursery. It doesn't matter where you're operating. It's not going to be the same transportation. Now, in dream language, transportation, whether you're riding a bicycle or you're on a yacht or anything that can transport you shows the size of that ministry or the, the thing that you are supposed to uh, operate in by its capability, right? So a big tanker goes through the water a certain way. A bicycle goes down the street a certain way. And so I find it really interesting, this this donkey had to not been ridden before, right? So he's going to, to sit on it. And, and think about them. They're like, okay, I'm going to go find a donkey. We don't know. Hope it's there. You know, he's told us it's going to be there. And then he goes and he, and they do that. He says, untie it and bring it here. If anybody asks you why are you untying the colt, you will say, the Lord needs it. There's something happening in this hour 
um, that he's going to encourage us. We are going to get different words where we're going to go to something that he said, now I know this hasn't been done before, or this hasn't operated like this before, and I want you to go get it. And when someone says to you, what you doing? Oh, the Lord needs this. Could you flow in that operation? If he directed you to do something, the Lord has need of this. So um, there's that. Why are you untying the colt? You'll say the Lord needs it. So there were those who were sent left and found the colt just as he had told them. And they were untying the colt and its owners asked them, uh, why are you untying the colt? <laughs> they said, the Lord needs it. I believe there is going to be transfer of wealth that's going to operate like this operations of uh, ministries that are going to be tied into things that have been set up secular that have been just doing their thing doing their thing and the Lord's going to point different people over to that and say the Lord needs this come partner with us come the Lord needs this business the Lord needs this right now and I know it's never been done before but we're gonna do this because the Lord needs this. They brought it to Jesus and they threw their robes over the colt and put Jesus on it. So even that, make it comfortable. <laughs> as he rode along, people were spreading their coats on the road as an act of homage before a king. So they put their, their um, robes on there. I'm sure part of that was comfortability, but the bigger part was it's, it's almost like you're, you're taking off your identity because robes in, in the Old Testament especially um, in their tradition said some things, right? That's why the coat of many colors was such a big to-do with Joseph because he got this really uh, colorful like, hey, you're going to be a ruler, this is so awesome coat. And so er wherever he went, people go, whoa, something's up with him just because of his robe. It represents a covering, right? So they're taking off who they are and laying it across. And then the Lord is ushered in on who they are, that they laid across, they humbled, and then he's ushered in. So there's something about that um, kind of, of following that really is looking at, you know, when we, when we look at, they were given an order and Many times when he gives us something, a command, an order, he encourages us to do something, he puts courage into us and tells us what to do. Um, we're like, that'd be so weird. Dean, just go, I, we need the Cadillac that's sitting over by uh, Minco this morning. I need you to go. Okay, the keys will be in it. It's never been ridden before. But if the owner asks you, what are you going to tell him? I mean, think about this. This is the operation that was going on. Like, what? You know, um, and so, and so you'd be like, well, the Lord has need of this. And he probably would say, and so does the police have need of you. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, that's just, but, but you you think about the, the thought, right? The thought is like, I'm under command. I'm under command just the same way uh, Oral Roberts and uh, I can't think of, Rex Humbart and some of those that really made the way for Christian TV sat at those courthouses and on the steps and people walk by them and they're on their knees praying. You know, guys are like, okay. But because they were literally saying, the Lord has need of this, and then they get denied the license to be able to be on TV. But they go back and do it again and do it again and do it again until finally, okay, fine, you can have this show, right? But what were they really were saying is the Lord has need of this. It wasn't a Christian organization. It wasn't any of that. It's the Lord has need of it, though. All right, fine. Take it. Deliver it. So there's an operation that's there that doesn't, mean, doesn't give us permission to just go require anybody's Cadillac. But at the same time, um, that we're going to get brave enough to act on his behalf when he does ask us to do something. And to look at it, we might not even use that term, the Lord has need of it, but we're saying the same thing just a different way. Maybe we're approaching this like there needs to be a group home over here. We need to have this over here. 
just uh, an example of it. Didn't even know I was operating in it, but the Lord had encouraged me in the last uh, men's house that we bought. I mean, it's just one street over from TBO, so um, I'm just driving, and all of a sudden, I get this sensation coming up from the kingdom right here um, that we got we have to have another men's house. So I said, Lord, we have to have another men's house. So I I come from TBO, and I just come around the block, and I said, like that one right there, or this one right here. I'll, t I'll take that one, Lord, you know. You let me know. You let me know. And and all of a sudden, I come to one that's for sale. Bada bing bang, it all fell together. And next thing you know, we have that house. It was wild how he put it together. And I don't have time to, to share that this morning. But the Lord had need of that house. And if you talk to the people living in it, they would say, yes, yes, I was in great need. And I cried out to God. Sometimes we have people who don't even believe in God and we put them in the houses and that's cool too. But the people that are in that house cried out to him. And the Lord right here in the kingdom stirred on me and said, um, I have need. Go find it. Yeah, I, I need that one. Right? And it wasn't a logical thing where like, I got to call somebody and see what houses are for sale and go through all this. It was not logical at all. And I just... Went by it, and I'm like, that, okay, right there, Lord. And then set it up. We went and looked at it. Boom, it all fell together. And, um, but if I wanted to try to do that again just on my own, it wouldn't work. Because the Lord doesn't have need of everybody's donkey, you know? <laughs> but this is a cult that was not ridden on before. And it was, it was uh, something that, you know, it kind of shows like a purity of like, this is for the king. It was set aside for that moment so that he was the first one to ride it, right? So, um, and then they lay their identity across it. And as um, the, the people in the town see that those robes are there and whatever, they do the same. As he rode along, people were spreading their coats on the road as an act of homage before the king. As soon as he was approaching Jerusalem near the descent of the Mount of Olives, the entire multitude of the disciples all those who are claimed to be his followers, that's amplified, make sure you know who that is, be began praising God, adoring him enthusiastically and joyfully with loud voices and for all the miracles and works of powers they had seen, shouting, blessed, celebrated, praised is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory, majesty, splendor in the highest heaven. So um, there's that humbling he's given us. Uh, go get the donkey, you know, whatever it is, go uh, sign up for the school board, you know, require some land, do whatever it is that the Lord has need of. And then we, we do that, and then we lay our identity down, because this is a new thing. And as he's entering, there's a, a, a praise that comes forth, and um, with loud voices, like we ain't playing. This is not one of those silent prayer moments. This is a for real, like they are praising, blessed, celebrated, praised, um, and, and going on and saying uh, how they adore him, but it was for all the things that he had already done. So that gives us a, a cue too on how we should come into our business adventure he's got us on or whatever it is that he's assigning us to go get whatever donkey we're supposed to be getting and then he's the lord we ushered in make way make the path straight for the lord to show up and we are laying our identities down and we just begin to worship him for everything he's already done that happens doesn't it when we go and believe for something and we lay hold of it if you don't do that it's a, it's a hard thing because you'll find um, you're not going to be in the right attitude. Now that you've ushered in his presence, you stay in that worshiping of who he is. Um, peace in the heaven and glory, majesty, splendor in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees from that crowd said to him, Teacher, rebuke your disciples for shouting these messianic praises. Shut it down like, dude. Get your donkey somewhere else and you know <laughs> and Jesus replied I tell you if these people keep silent the stones will cry out in praise because it's ushering he's ushering that new donkey riding on it 
people have laid their identity down. They're worshiping, acknowledging him as a king. And um, it's taken off the atmosphere in the demonic realm. And, and so he's not going to make that stop because it's supposed to be leading up to an even bigger thing. So many times we'll get persecuted when we start like, oh, God's going to do this. It's going to be so awesome. So going back to that house, I had two people come up to me. You need a, another men's house? Like, that's right. I don't know how you're going to do all this. And I'm <laughs> and it's my puppet. Um, so, um, and, I, and I'm just like, wow, first of all, you're not a part of it. So why are you concerned? Just doing what God tells me to do. I just don't know. Well, that's the problem. You don't know because he didn't say it to you. But you will find it's it's the same thing. It'll be like, you know, shut this stuff down. You guys are going way too far. First the coats, now this. This is getting crazy up in here. You know, so um, so rebuke them. He wanted to go and discipline them. You know, so Jesus replied, I tell you, if these people keep silent, the stones will cry out and praise. There's such a deep meaning to that that we can't get into this morning. And I don't know all of it. But it's got to be deep because when he makes a statement like that, we can assume we know what that means, but I think it runs really deep. The stones will cry out. And as he approached Jerusalem, he saw the city and wept over it and this uh, and the spiritual ignorance of the people. So here we usher God in, right? And he comes in and he's like, oh, <laughs> the spiritual ignorance here is pretty intense. And he weeps. just be honest sometimes that's what it's like when we set the whole tone we do what he tells us to do we lay down our life and and then he comes on in and and then he sees where we're all at and we're like oh but he weeps over us he's not ticked off over us he's weeping over us um, because there needs to be this change all right, so saying, if, if only you had known on this day of salvation, even you, the things which make for peace and which, make, which peace demands, but now they have been hidden from your eyes. So even the unsaved that were in that area, or I should say because salvation hadn't happened in that way, um, it would be the people who were lost or without the belief system too, he's weeping over. He's, that just shows how our Lord... Uh, how he rolls and so then he announces some things because you know you get this whole setup and you expect he's going to just give the most positive thing he could say ever you guys are awesome love y'all I was part of the creation here you know and so I mean but he's saying for a time of siege is coming when your enemies will put up a barricade which points stakes against you and surround you with armies and hem you in on every side and they will level you to the ground you Jerusalem and your children within you they will not leave in you one stone on another all because you did not come progressively to or recognize from observation and personal experience the time of your visitation when God was gracious towards you and offered you salvation that just got intense Everything felt like a party up to that moment. Hosanna. Ah. <laughs> and then it turns to him clearly, because he is the word. And the word divides things out. So he just divided some things out. That's what part of the weeping was about. And doesn't that sound a little bit like America? Which is kind of scary in a, you know, in a fear of the Lord way, kind of. Um, when God was gracious towards you. He was gracious toward us, and he offered us salvation. Then, not only that, he sees he's seeing big picture of Jerusalem. So there's a problem here. Then he goes into the temple. So God already knows here in America, there's a problem here. If you take this story and you lay it against what's going on, this is how he operates. It's just another wave of this same thing. Right? We're like, Hosanna, we'll lay our coats down and give him all. And then he comes in and he's like, whoa. And he weeps over us. At the same time, then he goes to the temple. 
That is the hour we are in. There is going to be great visitation to give another pull towards salvation. At the same time, America is like Jerusalem was, very inundated with the word of God, very much knew about the law, very much. You could go to other places, not so much, but there, you know, Pharisees are following and there's all this rulership is very religious. And he's like, oh, you're not getting it. So that's what made him weep. And then he thought, I got to go to the temple and set some things straight. Jesus went into the temple enclosure and began driving out those who were selling, saying to them, it is written, my house shall be a house of prayer. But you've made it a, hmm, a robber's den. And he's got to do it. He's got to come in to the churches and do it, doesn't he? He's got to do it. Anything, Lord God, that we are off here, forgive us. But he's got to do it because their attitude was wrong about the church itself. It's just a building we can go in and, you know, I'll sell my doves here and stuff. We can make some cash on the side. And, and it's like, this is a house of prayer. This is a temple that was set up for the reason of unity on the word so that we can lead into this next, this next time, right? This is intense. My house shall be a house of prayer, but you've made it a robber's den. He was teaching day after day in the temple, porches and courts. So he goes and he's trying to teach to get this up and running. But the chief priests and scribes and, and leading men uh, among them were seeking a way to put him to death, which is that same kind of thing. It'll roll that same way when something godly happens. There's going to be those who are going to be like, we got to get rid of this. And they could not find anything that they could do for all the people stayed close to him, close to him, close to him, and were hanging on to every word he said. So when persecution came and wanted to kill him at that moment, it wasn't his time. The people were there. They couldn't move in on it because the people we're hanging on to every word he said. That needs to be us in this hour. Because the church is being persecuted. The word of God is being persecuted. Jesus is being persecuted. And yet, there's certain things they just can't get at. Because there are people that are gathered tight to him. Amen? Hanging on to his every word. Can't get at that. Can't get that. And that's what he needs. He needs us in these places of rulership and the places of the church itself. We're hanging on to the actual word that he said. As our, our, our temples are a place of prayer. Now, um, if you want to run that deeper, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. <sighs> so... Many times our belief saw a system's off in this temple. And there's a lot of times we got to ask him to come in and clean house because we set some things up in this temple that have to go. So when he's going to set some things straight, he'll do it with us first. Revival comes to the heart of men and women first. And the church then comes into a form of that. Then it spreads to our community. But it is going to happen to us. The sanctifying power of God is going to happen to us. And we should actually, by the hovering and the brooding that we've been talking about, not be afraid of it, but invite it. Not resist it, but come into agreement with him like, Lord, do some clearing house here. Hmm? It's a very fear of the Lord, uh, awe and respect kind of prayer to pray something like that because you're aware something needs to be done something's off the the church game is off the whole um i know selling of people you know they're so and we raise up leaders that we're going to sell the leader 
you know, the whole uh, art hierarchy of how certain things are set up in churches that shut down the anointing? We're going to answer for that in this hour. And it's actually mercy that God wants to pour out to do that. He's about to go to the cross, right? So this is him giving mercy to set things straight so that let's clear this all up because, you know, we're moving into this next stage. And when I go, we got to be prepared for the Holy Spirit to show up. And there's got to be a great divide that'll happen so the lines are clear. Before his return, he's got to do the same thing. He's going to do the same thing. Then he'll come and he gives every opportunity. He was teaching day after day in the temple, porches and courts. But the chief priests and scribes and the leading men among the people were seeking a way to put him to death. And they could not find anything that they could do for all the people stayed close to him and were hanging on to his every word. On one of the days as Jesus was instructing the people in the temple area and preaching the good news. So he's still giving out the good news. The chief priests and scribes along with the elders confronted him and said to him, tell us by what kind of authority you are doing these things or who is the one who gave you this authority? People are going to ask us that question when we make things right in businesses. Because this is that hour. We've been taught to stay quiet now for the last 20 years. Quiet, shh, get along with everybody. Learn tolerance. We have to learn tolerance. There was nowhere here where it's Jesus, come on now, you know. Learn some tolerance. These people, that's their culture selling the doves here. And that's, that's just set up and no. He cleared the temple. He cleared the temple. And then he goes on and gives them such profound answers, which we'll go back into maybe next Sunday. I just wanted to, you know, Lord woke me and, and just kind of inserted the thought in my brain and said, read on to this. Because coming off of last week, where we prayed through some victory, some victory has happened. And those, the rest of the prayers that were prayed through in tongues, they are still in motion. It isn't like, aww. No, we didn't get that. No, those have gone out. Those word capsules have gone out and they're affecting the government. They're affecting our schools. They're affect everything that we prayed for. It's just out there hovering and brooding through the word, right? So um, he's looking for us to be so obedient that if he says, go, there's going to be this over in Cambridge, over in Stanchfield, over in Mora. I want you to go get it. And if they ask you, you say, the Lord requires this. And don't get crazy on me or immature and be, you know, taking this and running into a direction that's not mature thinking. But there are things you got to stand in front of and say, uh, actually, the Lord requires that. Say it to the spirit realm. That's being required for God. And then as you make straight the path for him to show up right you were obedient and that gave him the permission to ride on into the situation because of the obedience if they went and went and got the donkey what would happen then probably run some teaching for the disciples and a whole nother deal it would take them more time until they would got to the place where it's like i need you to be a disciplined one and go get the donkey but they went over and they got it. And then they took off their identity, laid it across. People were laying it on the road, saying, he's the king. All honor goes to him. And then dancing breaks out. Woo! Lots of worship's breaking out right now. And that worship isn't just going to uh, proceed the, you know, like, and then revival. He's going to clear the temple. Let's stand. He is going to go through and make some things right. He's a righteous judge. He's a righteous. His righteousness is what we're supposed to be seeking first. Right? So for us to stay in a zone 
where uh, we're in that safety area of his grace and his love. And we have to have sought his righteousness, his kingdom and his righteousness, the right way of doing things. That doesn't mean we as people are perfect, but it means our attitude is whatever you want, Lord, whatever you require. And we will be part of going and getting that. And we will lay this down. And we will worship no matter what anyone says. Right? Because there's some things coming this year that are going to go. Poof. There's going to be a great collide. The two sides that have divided out are now going to say, I see you. I see you. And the war is on. That's, the, that's what's happening. And so then we come in, hallelujah. And he warns us, and there's been prophecies already, that we're being warned just the same way he said, for a time of siege is coming when your enemies will put up a barricade with pointed stakes against you and surround you with armies and hem you in on every side. And they will level you to the ground, you Jerusalem and your children within you. They will not leave you in one stone on another. All because you did not come progressively to recognize from observation and personal experience the time of your visitation. When God was gracious towards you and offered you salvation. Him speaking that out was setting things into order. They had time to change their attitude. They had time. Then he went and he taught them so they could see differently because he had wept over them. See, he's gracious. Let me teach you why. Let me show you why. Give you every opportunity to believe. We are in that hour. He's going to clear the temple. Oh, God, we invite you to speak on our temple's behalf, the one that we live in, the one that we live in, Lord, the things that are out of order, the things that, that maybe we just let move in and we settle for it. And it's right in the foyer of our church, in, in this temple, right there. It's right in that spot of entrance. God, forgive us. God, forgive us, cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Cleanse us, Lord God. You are so good. You are so good. And Lord, you come in and you teach us. You show us, you reveal to us the better way. We need the better way, Lord God. We're, we're operating in certain things that are just a rote and a rut and certain things that are actually religion and, and we can't see it. And, and we're doing that in our temple and we're doing that in this temple. Cleanse us from it. Cleanse us in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. But we agree with you, Lord. We agree with you that it's time for a house clearing. It's time for things to be made right in the year 2020 we saw. And we're going to answer to and for what we saw in the year 2021. Lord, you made that clearer. And you set some things in motion that got us ready for the year 2022, which was the great divide. Lord, now it's so clear. We have to choose. We have to choose you this day who we're going to serve. We're going to choose you. In this upcoming year, Lord, many great things are going to take place. But they're birthing now out of this great divide. New leaders, new priests, new kings are going to rise. Newness, newness, newness come in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can feel the fear of the Lord in this place. He loves us. His mercy is here for us. This is not a let me scare you. This is just reality of his character. It has to be done hover and brood over all the churches in this land especially minnesota there were decisions made by church leaders through this election 
they're going to be held accountable for. They're going to be held accountable. There were many warnings that came. And I weep over them the same way the Lord weeps over all of it. Come with new teaching, Lord God. Come with new teaching. Clear the temples. Have mercy and open the eyes of those who have chosen to harden down or those who actually just didn't know. Those who have uh, chosen to harden down are doing their own thing. God have mercy. So I wanted to make sure that everybody, you know, because you'll come off of something like that, like the, the election, and we just go, oh, okay. Now what? Now God's going to move because decisions were made, and it'll happen again on a bigger scale when we're dealing with the President of the United States. The lies that have happened, the mistrust that's out there because of, of fraud and different things like that, he's not going to let that lay. So prepare your heart as we go into worship just to cry out to him because, Lord, show us. Show us, show us. We will not stop dancing. We will not, you're not rebuking us for that. You're saying, no, this is required. Even the stones will cry out. This is not going to stop because we've chosen to dance with you and we are going to hang on your every word. Real tight to you, Lord God. 